Hey, good evening, Messiah Baptist Church. Good to see all of y'all. Thank you for coming out, and all of you folks who will be watching by way of the YouTube ministry later, welcome to you as well. The message tonight is actually in the form of a question. And the question is, did Jesus ever baptize anyone? Did Jesus ever baptize anyone? This is uh, not only a very intriguing question, but at first glance, it could almost be contradictory according to the scriptures. I'll get into that and explain that momentarily. But first of all, I want to tell you a little something about John. We're told that John came to prepare a path for the Lord. We're also told that John was born about six months before Jesus Christ was born, and they were cousins. We're also told that John had been called to baptize people for their sins in regard to the coming kingdom of God. Amen. According to Mark chapter 1, verse 4, it says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And we know these things how? Because the Bible is God's word, inerrant, infallible, and always trustworthy, right? Amen. Remember how John reacted as the religious leaders came out into the wilderness to challenge him, to question him about his baptism? In Matthew 3, 7, it says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You see, John knew their hearts and their minds just as Jesus did. Amen. But get what John says in Luke 3.16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Now, there are variations on, these, on that verse right there in all four Gospels. Uh, for those of you who do references and things, it's found in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 8, and John 1, verse 26. That verse, or that idea, is actually also found in Acts chapter 11, verse 16, where Luke records Peter's remembrance of this verse when he's dealing with Cornelius the centurion and his family. Yeah. So that brings to mind a couple of questions right off. Is this a literal or a figurative baptism that John refers to that Jesus will be doing? Is Jesus' baptism only with the Holy Spirit for believers, or does Jesus actually baptize with water like John did, even though water baptism isn't mentioned in that verse? But did he? What I want you to do, those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We're going to read... Verses 22 through 24. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, that's pretty clear cut. Basically, it says that he, Jesus, tarried in the land of Judea and baptized. And the verse is further affirmed when it says that John also was baptizing. You know, according to Webster's Dictionary, some synonyms for the word also include in addition to, as well as, similarly, likewise, to, and furthermore. So in other words, 
Also, and its synonyms are words that are used to acknowledge ideas, thoughts, events, what have you, and link the two together, generally speaking. So used in these verses that I just read, the thing that also ties together the event is baptism. Because yeah. John's doing it and Jesus is doing it. Okay? So let's read verse 26. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. But before we accept these two verses as gospel, pun intended, I want you to turn to the fourth chapter of John. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, and I want you to note this part that's in parentheses. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Amen. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Now here's where the question truly gets interesting and intricate at the same time. So does this mean that Jesus himself did not baptize anyone, but his disciples did baptize? Or does it mean that Jesus didn't baptize anyone except for his disciples? Okay? So, the thing we have to look at here is, does John chapter 3, verses 22 through 24, and verse 26, contradict themselves with John 4, 1 through 3? John 3 expressly indicates that Jesus baptized in two different places, two different verses. But in John 4, it expresses the notion that he either may have or may not have. So what I want to do here, <clears throat> I, number one, I personally don't believe that Scripture anywhere contradicts itself. Right. So let's just get that out there right now. So what I'd like to do, a little sidebar, if you will, I'd like to try to explain that part of verse 2 that's in parentheses there and why it's set apart the way that it is. So with a show of hands, I want to know how many of you guys out there, you ladies, remember high school English where you used to diagram sentences? Any of y'all remember that? Oh, boy. Okay. Well, since I was sort of a semi-English major in high school and college, hey, listen, I could repair a dangling participle with the best of them. <laughs> but I'm going to try to explain and quantify what I just said. So if you diagram sentences, you probably remember something called understood subjects and verbs, right? You remember that? I'll give you an example. It's a sentence where there is no specific subject or verb. To it. Generally, there are either one word or small phrases. And I'll give you an example of a few. Some um, sentences that would express what I'm trying to say. Things like stop, go to your room, pick up your dirty socks. Or even as Brian, when he started the, uh, or Brandon, I'm sorry, as Brandon said, uh, as we were getting ready to start church services tonight, what was it you said? Good evening, Messiah Baptist Church. Now these things, these are all, what I just gave you are all examples of either exclamatory or interrogatory sentences that either give a command or ask a question. They can be single words or they can be phrases. But the problem is that they... Uh, they either give a command, like I said, or ask a question, but they, um, they, the, the subject and the verb is not expressly given, but merely implied, mm -hmm. which is basically what happens in that portion of, or that verse 2 in chapter 4 of John, okay? So, I'll give you an example of what I mean. When Brandon said... Good evening, Messiah Baptist Church. He didn't specifically address each of us, but we all knew that he was talking to each of us individually and collectively, right? Yeah. And the, instead of Good evening, Messiah Baptist Church, 
basically what that sentence means is, it is a good evening, Messiah Baptist Church. Welcome. You know, yeah. glad you're here. So the understood part of that is, it is. Same thing with, let's say I'm at home, and Teresa comes up and says, pick up your dirty socks. Well, I know exactly who she's talking about. She doesn't have to call me by name, but I know. The name is implied. Okay, so now that we've got that, this is the same thing, like I said, that happens in that verse where we read this. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. This is referred to as a sentence fragment where, again, you have to decipher its intended meaning. We have the same two options that I mentioned earlier. Did Jesus baptize or did his disciples? Does it mean that Jesus didn't baptize anybody except his disciples? So let's do a little bit of detective work to try to figure it out. Jesus had already exhibited the importance of baptism by going to John out in the wilderness to get John to baptize him, okay? Though John was initially hesitant to do so, in Matthew 3.15, he's reassured by Jesus. Jesus, and Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill righteousness. Then he suffered him. But I don't want you to miss the first part of the encounter between uh, Jesus and John the Baptist. Just prior to that, in verses 13 and 14, it says this, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be, what? Baptized of thee. Yeah. And comest thou to me? See, John not only knew the significance of baptism in general, but he also knew the significance between water baptism and spiritual baptism. Not just that, but which one was greater and who was greater to be performing the act itself. Amen. So, and we know this how? Because this is God's word and God's word is inerrant and infallible and Amen. truly trustworthy. So, was Jesus baptizing? Or was it the disciples who were doing so by his direction and under his authority? You know, Jesus had oversight over all of the work that the disciples did while Jesus was with them, correct? So it could be said that Jesus himself was baptizing while his disciples were doing it. I'll give you an example of why that can be. Sometimes we can describe or ascribe work done by individuals to another person. And I'll tell you how, what I mean by that. Okay, let's say that you have the owner of a lawn mowing service. And the guy goes around and he's knocking on doors, getting more business. And when they come to the door, the guy says, I mow 30 lawns a week. When in fact, he doesn't mow any of them. His employees do. Yeah. But for all intents and purposes, since he's the owner of the company, he can... He can do that. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to take this even back a little further. I want to go all the way back to the choosing of the disciples for a second. Most of these men were working men, fishermen most, right? Now we're not told if any of these men went to the temple before their calling. We're not told um, if any of them were ever baptized by John the Baptist. As a matter of fact, we're only told that two of John's disciples left him to follow Jesus. And only one of them is named. That was Andrew. The other one forever and ever, regardless of how much you debate and everything, will always remain anonymous. We have no clue who the other one was. Okay? We don't even know if any of these people knew who John the Baptist was before their calling. Now, there is this. It says in the Bible that John the Baptist was out in the wilderness and that all of the people from the surrounding areas were coming to him to be baptized, right? We also know this. We know that 
John the Baptist was the only one who was utilizing water baptism for the remission of sins at that time. Okay? So, on the assumption that the majority of the uh, disciples that Jesus picked were baptized by John the Baptist, I'm pretty sure we know of one who probably was not baptized by John the Baptist. And that was Levi, the tax collector whose name later was changed to Matthew, presumably by Jesus, just like he changed uh, Simon's name to Peter. But here's part of the reason why. Tax collectors were the most hated, reviled people in the entire nation of Israel. And the reason they were is because, first of all, they had to buy a Roman tax franchise so that they could extort money from the rest of their countrymen and give it, first of all, to the Roman occupiers and then extort even more of it so they can lie in their own pockets. Amen. Some worse than others. Yes. You know, you got the guy over here who's just getting by and you got the guy with the mansion and the yeah. yacht and all that. So it, these guys were not good folks. As a matter of fact, the Jews did not associate with tax collectors. They were considered social outcasts, as you might expect, just the kind of people Jesus went after. <laughs> um, but it says that, uh, as I was looking this up, it said that they were actually banned from being witnesses in civil courts or courts of law because they were considered so despicable, uh, despicable and untrustworthy. They were even, get this, they were even excluded from going into the temple which is another reason why I'm going, you know, maybe this is the one guy out of all of them that probably had not been baptized. I got a little something about Levi slash Matthew that I want to bring out here. I find it interesting to note that his calling is mentioned in all three synoptic gospels. But two of those gospels, Mark and Luke, refer to him as Levi. Only in Matthew's account does he use this new name that Jesus gave him. That's the only one of the three synoptic Gospels. There's a reason for that. The name Matthew, the interpretation of that name means gift of Yahweh. The name Levi interpreted means joined and I think that there's a dual meaning for that word. I'll tell you why. The name Levi, as in the Hebrew man Levi, was joined together with the Romans before he was called. But the Hebrew man Matthew was joined with Jesus as an apostle. I just thought that was kind of a neat thing. Okay, So we're never told in Scripture anywhere that Jesus took any of his disciples or apostles to John for baptism. So for the thinking man and woman, that basically would leave one option. Jesus did it. Just like he told all of his apostles and disciples to do the same thing later on everywhere they went. The Great Commission in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, is it earth-shattering doctrinally for each of us to know for sure whether Jesus ever baptized anyone or not? No, it isn't. Is it possible that Jesus baptized people on other occasions that aren't recorded in Scripture? It could be. Yes, it is. It could be. You know, the possibility exists because remember, there's a verse in the Bible that says if all of the things that he ever did were written down, the whole world wouldn't hold all of it. So we don't know what he did, one way or the other. Okay? So a plausible explanation, as we've seen earlier, exists pro and con. Either he did or he didn't. But I want to say something here. 
Here's a really good quick thought for maybe why Jesus did not baptize anyone. He did not want others to think more highly of themselves or superior to others based on the fact that Jesus had baptized them. Right? Right. Wouldn't you think, since it's pretty much human nature, that somebody that had been baptized by Jesus would be, you know, tempted to broadcast that, to yeah. puff their chest out a little bit, yeah. you know, right. gloat to other people? Yeah. That's just, like I said, that's just human nature. That's right. So by not baptizing anyone, Jesus probably prevented a lot of unnecessary division. Amen. Much like what Paul had to address to the church in Corinth. In 1 Corinthians 1, verses 12 through 14, get this. Now this I say, this is Paul talking. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. Yeah. But it's interesting to note to me that at the birth of the church, it's Peter who preaches this magnificent sermon, very first message that calls for baptism. And at the end of that sermon, both baptisms, water and spiritual baptism, are mentioned. Acts 2.38 says this, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Both baptisms. Right? Right there. Both baptisms. So for myself, personally, you know, um, it's essential for me to realize that even though I was not water baptized by Jesus or John the Baptist or Peter or... Paul or any of the other apostles. Yes. I was spiritually baptized with the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ. Yes. Upon my decision, my confession of faith and water baptism. Amen. So, I just want you to know that I'm not trying to convince anyone either way whether Jesus ever did or ever didn't. That was not the idea behind the message. The message was given to all of you just to have you put your thinking caps on and stir your thinking up a little bit Amen. outside the box, so yes. to speak. Okay? So I just pray that the message itself was informative, that it was enjoyable, and that it was a blessing to Amen. all of you. Praise so with Lord. that, you know, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Shalom, go with the peace of God. Amen.